sound here now. It's high noon, so if you could please take your places. We're about to begin the program. Get yourself settled in. If you haven't ordered food yet, the gentleman in black will take your orders. And if you can pay by cash, that's helpful. If you can't pay by credit card, but um, it just speaks of the process uh, with the cash transaction. Well, welcome to Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing. This sunny, I think we had a little bit of sun outside, uh, January 27th. I'm filling in for Derek. He sends his apologies, but will be along later. He's at a client meeting this morning. So he's asked me to make the introductions. But before we do that, um, a show of hands, please, for anybody who's new to Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing. Welcome. Um, you can follow Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing on our website, la2m.org. We have a LinkedIn group and a Facebook page. Um, just search under LA2M and you'll find us. We have a full program of speakers lined up each Wednesday. We meet at the same time, same place, every Wednesday. And we have a rolling speaker program taking us through April. I have a call to action for potential speakers. I'm pulling together the May and June schedules. So if anybody's interested in speaking at Lunch and Hour Marketing, please come see me afterwards. We are a nonprofit organization, and so we do pass the hat. Not literally the hat, but the container. And Stacy, our treasurer, is going to start circulating that now. It's a recommended $3 donation. It's not mandatory. If you feel you want to give um, to the uh, program, that's fine. If not, that's fine too. Today's speaker. We have a first for Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing. We have never had a program event covering digital magazines and catalogs. So it's a new topic for us. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Jeff Kalman from iPaper, who will be taking us through the ins and outs. Jeff? This Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, my name is Jeff Kalman. Uh, I am a local person. Um, I uh, went to Ann Arbor Pioneer um, and then uh, went for the Army for quite a bit of time. Then uh, back Eastern Michigan University, uh, then MBA at Michigan State University. Um, spent a long time at Ford Motor Company as well, doing a bunch of IT stuff. Uh, then uh, I kind of did the uh, mass exodus when everybody else left, I think like in 2007, and wanted to try my hand, uh, kind of going entrepreneurial, and um, uh, we kind of found uh, iPaper. Uh, the way that we kind of found them, uh, iPaper is actually a Danish company. Uh, the software development uh, and some of the servers are in uh, Aarhus, Denmark, um, and uh, basically my family's business was looking for some way to cut their print costs by going digital. Uh, they were spending about $400,000 um, a year on their uh, catalog, distribution, production, etc. And uh, my uh, family was looking for a cut cost. Uh, he actually saw, uh, uh, my son actually saw a bang and all catalog online. And it was like a whole page turning type thing. And uh, I was like, I want that for my company. And the company's name is Model Expo. And uh, they do uh, hobby kits and ship kits and so forth. Hollywood, Florida. And uh, so we contacted them and they said, well, we'd love to help you, but we don't have a U.S. distributor. So iPaper USA, we got the idea to, uh, to uh, start. Uh, we've been here in the U.S. for a little bit over two years now. Uh, it's been kind of interesting because the growth of the digital side uh, for digital publications has gone through some inter interesting changes. Uh, everybody's familiar with um, uh, uh, basic content management systems. For example, you go to uh, Detroit News, uh, DebtNews.com, and what you see there is basically like a content management system. You see all the articles and so forth. Um, however, it, it's sometimes it's not in a very familiar way because what people are familiar with is is, is a print-based publication that they can pick up, flip the pages, and read. 
And so it'd be great if there was a way to, to, to marry the two so you can get the digital benefits of um, everything of going online and also we get the same type of content that you see. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about. Um, just before uh, I, I started speaking, somebody came up asking me, uh, asking if this was the, uh, what, what was kind of the theme or the topic. And I, I, I think that there was uh, some interesting misconceptions about going digital. And I'm just kind of curious to find out from people here uh, what their thoughts are about going digital or what did they think that they were going to see today. Any, any, any comments or questions? Anyone? Yes? I just thought I was going to see somebody talking about something that I've seen, which is like I subscribe to a digital magazine about, oh, I subscribe to a digital magazine about dogs and the pages flip and I thought it would be talking about the technology that's not the one they use, one that's similar to that. I was curious. You're, you're, you're pretty much spot on. Will you also uh, talk about what Apple announced today? Was there a big announcement from Apple? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, didn't I thought today was the day. <laughs> Never mind. Unless you know something you want to tell us about. Jeff, you're just going to have to come back next week. Uh, there's still a uh, question in the back. Something to hear a little bit about best practices when taking a uh, print catalog or print publication and putting it online. Okay. Can you say a little bit about XPS, the uh, Microsoft product? I just saw it yesterday as a next to the PDF option. And I'm inter interested in hearing about consumer habits, um, how much they're embracing this format, what sort of numbers you're seeing, and you know what consumer reaction is to this, as well as distributing it to them. That's, that's kind of an interesting point. And if I don't touch on all the answers, please throw a French fry in or something like that. <laughs> um, it, it, it seems, now this is just my opinion, um, that this technology was uh, it has been embraced a little bit more quicker in, in uh, Europe, um, it, it seems that there was a technology hotbed for this flash page flipping technology in, in Denmark. And I just broke around with them. I said, well, would you guys take like a common college course or something like that and say this is cool, just start doing it. But um, uh, so it, it's, it's, it seems a little bit slower, I'll say, to, to, uh, to implement or adopt in the US. However, um, because companies are getting forced to cut costs, uh, uh, be they uh, a, 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 a catalog company or uh, they're, if they're a publisher looking for giving alternate services, etc. Um, okay, uh, so if I don't answer all your questions, just throw something at me. Um, I'm actually going to be doing the, the uh, presentation. It's, it's not very large uh, because I wanted to open up for a bunch of questions and so forth later. Um, in, in our own product, it's um, running offline uh, uh, because our product can run online and offline. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to just flip to the first page. Why bridge the gap between print and digital? Why take the lead? Well, for one thing, uh, the print industry is not going away. A, a lot of people think that because uh, I'm with a digital publication company that I'm going to go up here, jump up and down, say print's dead, everybody needs to flip over to uh, 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 the digital side. But in reality, uh, what I'd like to, to, to talk about is, is, is helping a company come up with a digital strategy that complements the print-based strategy. Because there's, there's certain elements or aspects or functionality on the digital side that you just can't get out of the print side. And I'll go on and speak about those in a little bit. Um, competitive environment. Uh, people are starting to jump on board with this slowly. Uh, a lot of things that I'm seeing is, is for example, a, a publisher, uh, they'll start making a, a digital service offering and then their competition across the street or something like that will say, hey, so-and-so down the road is starting to offer digital editions, I want to jump on board too. So, so that's kind of pushing the environment also. Um, and then you can look at the reasons why a lot of people are jumping on board with this. Costs are increasing, and, and, and this is thinking of from um, a typical uh, catalog retailer or, 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 or something like that. And also you can think of this for a publisher of magazines, etc. Um, costs are increasing for production, uh, postage, uh, material costs, and storage costs. 
Um, a lot of people neglect to think of the storage costs, but if they have like a huge catalog, they're going to you know, print like a zillion catalogs, well, it has to be stored somewhere as well. Uh, market reach limitations. Um, the thing about, about going print is, is that you know there's a finite number of people that you're going to reach with a print-based publication. Sure, you can put on your website, click here to download the latest PDF of, of your catalog, etc. cetera. Uh, but if, if, depending on what your uh, uh, mail, mail strategy is like, there's only so many catalogs, magazines, et cetera, that you can push out. If you go digital, there's, there's, there's not too much that's limiting your, your reach with your potential clients or customers. And then, you know, I, I can talk about the environment issues uh, till the cows come home. Um, saving paper, you know, et cetera, environmentally friendly, and so forth. Uh, what's missing from print? Well, capturing reader attention. Wouldn't it be great if you can open up a magazine, and the first thing you do is you see a video pop out, or there's some type of special flash feature, or, or, or something like that. Because ultimately, you want to do something that's more engaging with, with your reader. Uh, also, it would be great if you can see where their eyes are going. Um, and I can show you an example from some of our statistics uh, that you can actually see where people are clicking uh, on the page, almost like a scatter plot diagram that's superimposed over, over each page. And that gives you a lot of good valuable information that you're not going to get from, from just handing somebody a catalog or a magazine, etc. Uh, that's, that, that's print based. Uh, what ads or products are of interest? Likewise, you, you can track what links people are, are clicking. Uh, where they're clicking to zoom in and zoom out. Uh, interactivity, uh, well, you can drop, like I was saying, some, some interactive flash objects and pull the reader into more information. Uh, kind of like the shoot and forget. Um, excuse me, I spent a long time in the military. Um, uh, the, the shoot and forget notion is, say, say that you, uh, you know, it's like you, you fire a missile and just let the missile go and I don't know where it's going to land. Uh, kind of like the same notion of uh, sending out catalogs and so forth. Uh, um, you're you're, you're, you're going to create this catalog, but wouldn't it be great if you can get a lot of feedback almost immediately back on, on what products are of interest? Then you can have the flexibility to modify, adjust, reproduce the catalog electronically, and then fire again and uh, adjust from there. Also, some, some of the things that would be great to find out, um, uh, how, how much time are people spending on each page? Uh, these are all things that you can't get. Granted, you know, there's also the, the, the flip side of this in, in the sense that there are some limitations to, uh, to digital as well. Um, you know, for example, you have to have some type of electronic means to, to view it, etc. Uh, anyway, any, any questions so far? No? Okay, bridge the gaps between print and digital, benefits of digital. Extend the investment, extend the investment of your print-based publications. This whole notion that I'm talking about is that a lot of companies, be they a, a publisher, magazine, a, a retail company, etc., they're making a significant investment in the creation of, of their printed catalog. The printed catalog, you can almost think, is an extension of the brand name. Uh, when you get your Land's End catalog, uh, you know, you get like umpteen million catalogs starting about October, November in uh, everybody's mailbox. Um, uh, but you get those catalogs and, and you associate that brand with, um, with the company. So this is another way to leverage a little bit more return on the investment of creating those print-based publications by taking them um, digital. Uh, speed, time to market. Um, I also spent a lot of time in the automotive industry, and the big thing was how fast we crank out the development of new vehicles. Well, this is kind of like the same concept. How, how fast, what can I do to reduce the cycle time to put, in a sense, rubber on the road for a new magazine, uh, a, a, new, a new catalog, etc. So then you're able to almost beat your competition to the punch for putting out a new product, and the new product being a publication. Uh, track those stats. Well, you're going to get a lot of statistics, and I'm going to show you uh, a lot of the stats that we have on the back end, or I should say something. Um, get revenue from those ads online. You can also think of your uh, publication as, as, as an opportunity for a publisher or magazine publisher to, to increase their revenue. 
because one thing you can think of, if you can track the ads, the people that are clicking on the ads on their digital publication, then you can say, hey, you know, your, your ad has been viewed X amount of times, uh, it's been clicked on X amount of times, and, and here's the click percentage. And you can start showing this to uh, your clients on, on a monthly basis. Uh, no distribution constraints. You know, kind of like the channel's wide open. You're, you're, you're not constrained by postage. You're not constrained by uh, the time for production. Uh, you're, again, you're, uh, time of production meaning the, the actual printing and the assembly of the magazine. Yes, you still have to have a graphic artist or somebody like that create the magazine. And one interesting note that I just thought of, um, there's, there's more companies that are starting to think of going, um, of creating digital editions only. And so there's, there's certain things that they have to change in the development and the production of their, of their magazine that's just a little bit different. Um, because, for, for example, some of the font size uh, is, is increasing. Uh, some, some of the page layout is, is changing because if they're thinking of, um, of uh, the print base, you know, there's, there's just different constraints. And, and then there's the flexibility. Um, there's uh, lots of changes. Uh, for, for example, if there's mistakes in, in, in a catalog or something like that, and you sent that to the printer, and it goes out, you know, producing thousands of, uh, of uh, editions or issues or, uh, of, 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 the, of the catalog or in the magazine, there's nothing you can do except wait for the next one to come out. That's almost like a sunk cost if, 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 it, if it truly um, ha has to be fixed. This thing, just upload a new PDF, convert, publish online. Um, anyway, uh, so now, any questions about benefits of going digital? There's a ton of others, but I'm just kind of capturing everything else. Yes, sir. Um, hi, my name is Sunny. I'm from uh, Play Magazine. We do do some digital distribution online, but my question is, um, you know, all the digital is really targeted at a certain age group. Let's just say, grandma trying to go online to watch the magazine. Why wouldn't they go to an easier format, let's say a website, which offers the exact same things that you're offering, but why would they want to go for this almost novelty magazine kind of thing? That, that's, a, that's a fair question, um, and it's kind of interesting because my uh, family's business that does the shipbuilding um, uh, model, hobby sh shipbuilding thing, he kind of jokes around, he says that all of his clients are dying because a typical person that, that, that builds a ship kit is, is, is well beyond the retirement age. Um, and, and so, but he puts his digital publications online. One thing about it is, is that it's a very familiar thing. You know, uh, uh, people feel comfortable with with looking at a magazine and being able to flip the pages. And also, if, if you, know, you want to share a certain article or something like that, uh, or if uh, you know, thinking in terms of, of a catalog, uh, one of the things that comes to mind, um, you get the catalog in the mail, you don't feel comfortable ordering online. You can pick up the phone and call them. You can be flipping through your, your online catalog. And, and also the same catalog that you have in your hands, you can call the company and say, I want this item on page 42. And you can make sure that it's not going to happen to apples. Um, it is interesting, though, to get back to your question. Uh, there, there's, um, uh, I have talked to some people saying, I don't get it. And, and sometimes it's a bit of the, of the younger population. Um, uh, because they're like, well, I'll just go online. You know, I, I just want to see all the data, all the articles, or, 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 or whatever. Uh, so, so, so that is a valid thing. However, I'm not seeing that too, too common. It, that question does come up every now and then. Yes, well, it's not really an either or because you can embed this in your website, right? Yes. But this could be like your weekly features. Yeah. Like Staples uses an ad like that for their exactly. weekly. Exactly. Exactly. Question in the back. Um, there are a lot of benefits for the publisher that we've talked about. Can you talk about? Um, I mean. Are you seeing customer demand at this point for this format over the hard copy format? Are they telling you they don't want the hard copy catalog? Or is this more driven by the needs of the public? I've seen it go both ways. A lot of people don't like their mailbox clogged with, with a bunch of catalogs coming. Uh, some people are very comfortable curling up with a laptop, you know, and just flipping through the catalogs. Um, uh, uh, it, it, it almost depends on, on the personality of the person because there's times when I prefer, I, I'm a big horse person, I, I 
do jumpers and stuff like that. I get my Dover Sadler catalog, and I just love to have it in my hands and, 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 and look at it. But, you know, if, if I go to a company's website uh, that I do not get their catalogs or publication, it's a great way to preview what they have. And so I do see a, a lot of people uh, uh, looking at them that way. Um, I haven't really seen a lot of uh, studies yet or stats come out on, on, on truly if people prefer one over the other. I think the jury's still kind of out on that. But, but there is a significant um, uh, 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 advantage from a publishing perspective to go this way and reduce costs, but then I go back to my original statement. It's coming up with a digital strategy that complements your print case strategy. And when you look at the cost involved with this, it's it's a lot less than uh, uh, putting out a new catalog. It's, um, is it compatible with a reader, like Kindle or something like that? Uh, no, this is... Um, you can see in the upper corner there, this is Adobe Flash Player 9. It's just basically a Flash-based application. This one is running off my desktop, um, so it's an offline mode. Uh, but when you go online, it's, it's basically a Flash application, so virtually any browser that can handle Flash can certainly do this. And so I'm going to talk. Yes? Oh, okay. No, it's fine. Oh, okay. Um, so I want to make sure that I know this Yes, exactly. Um, and, and this is where you go into um, the features between the various digital publishing companies. Um, uh, a lot of it, you can almost say that this is almost getting uh, to a commodity type type thing at page four and they everybody's got a, their own page for conversion. Uh, different digital software companies that do this type, to type of thing have slightly different features. And um, there are some companies that offer the ability to have like a note section where actually it's, it's like a, um, a sticky. Sorry, I haven't drank enough coffee in a sticky thing right? <laughs> on the page. Um, uh, but, and, and also your, your, your other question about downloading. Um, you need to print or actually, if I click on this button, it's, it's going to download the PDF file itself. I mean, we're really not neglecting the PDF file whatsoever. Um, and uh, so, yes, there, there, there are download capabilities. Yes? Uh, on that note, is there a feature where, let's like say, the reader's downloaded it, I could put my you know, copyright on it, mark on it, so that they don't go and print it somewhere else? Yeah, yeah um, because, well, 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 for the PDF download, it doesn't have to, it can download a different PDF that you specify. It doesn't have to be the one that's used to create that. So if you want to put the security on the PDF to make sure that, you know, people don't plagiarize them. Have their wrongful way with your publication. Um, also, there's some of the Zoom capabilities. Anyway, uh, there's certain things that you can do, like I was talking about, um, that um, you can do on the digital side that you cannot do on the print side, and that's obviously embedding video. Um, hopefully, that comes across. Sorry, I just love that video. Uh, I, most people don't know, but I do full contact jousting. Uh, I was one of the knights and riders at the Celtic Fest the past, couple, past couple years. We're doing more stuff. But anyway, this this just shows this just shows to demonstrate um, how how you can easily embed video, and that's just a simple for Flash Player that's that's embedded on there. Uh, and the shot below it just shows the graphic editor that's used. So you can upload your video, you can upload additional images, you can easily drop flash objects. And, and sorry if I'm going a little bit too technical um, for, for some people. I was just trying to keep it high level, but I can get kind of nerdy a little bit. Um, uh, this is just a demonstration uh, of, of just kind of showing how, how for example, uh, you can create hotspots for, 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 for linking, and it's, it's read like that just because I was just trying to make a point so you can draw like boundaries on a page saying that when people click here, uh, they're going to go to a certain location, a different page, etc. And these are all things that are, that are, that are tracked. Um, looking at some uh, benefits on, on, on the, on the e-commerce side, uh, one of the things that we've done is, is also uh, actually in, 
embedded links on, on each product so that when you click on it, it can add it directly to the shopping cart uh, on their e-commerce system. So, so that way they can flip through the catalog saying, I want to add that to my cart, and it goes right, right to the cart for checkout. Uh, so that, so it's like, you know, just flipping through the catalog, I want that, I want that, I want that, and then it goes directly to the cart. And also, um, another big selling point, uh, I've attended some, some, uh, um, some of the uh, internet retailer trade shows, like down in Miami and stuff, and the big thing that they preach is providing a platform in a catalog, and especially an online catalog, where any opportunity that you get to show additional detail for something. Well, here's the perfect opportunity. You can add additional links, you can add videos about the product, you can drop flash objects about the product, uh, you know, show product flipping, revolving, and all that type of stuff. <laughs> That's my parents' business, my work. Yes, so. How does this show up on smartphones? Um, this is another topic about um, depending on uh, the digital provider that you're getting this from. There's some companies out there that provide an app so it will show up um, on a smartphone. Others, since it's flash based, like since it's flash based, Blackberries, I think, don't take flash. And, and so it kind of goes back and forth. And, and we've, we've debated this internally for, for uh, quite a bit because it's like on a typical smartphone screen, it's like about that big. Well, how are you going to put a print-based publication that can be workable on something like that? You know, we talked about just showing a column at a time. Um, it, it's, it's still kind of undecided. I, 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 in my mind, the jury's not out on that. I think that some of the companies jumped on board with um, putting it out on a flash or on a, on a, on a smartphone um, uh, without thinking the process all the way through. Um, I wouldn't, want, I wouldn't want to look at a catalog and screen that small. But people want it. People like, like it. And I'll be the first to admit, I'm not the smartest person. Um, bridge the gap between print digital and features. Uh, spread the news. Um, on this side, what, what this is showing you is saying that you're flipping through the catalog, or saying that you're looking at a particular article or something like that, and you want to share uh, um, uh, the content that you're looking at. Uh, with, with either friends by email, uh, you can just click on little buttons. I know this is an eye chart, uh, but, but, but there's uh, the ability to directly send this to, to Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, a couple other things. Um, on the other side, uh, the thing that I want to show you, I, I, I talked before about seeing where people are, 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 are clicking. And this is a screenshot from some of the stats that we recorded. Um, and um, what you're able to do is that the, the little light blue dots are where people are clicking to zoom in, and the uh, pink or magenta dots are where people are clicking to zoom back out. So you kind of see, and this was a baseball cap catalog. Um, so this is something that a regular print-based catalog is just not going to give you. Um, and, and also, now you could argue that, um, uh, well, if I, if I have my, my uh, regular e-commerce system online, I know how many people are interested in, in, this, in, this, in one particular cap over the other because that's what they're clicking on to add it to the shopping cart. But what this is showing you, what's really catching their eye? And, and, and you can see where there's like um, little centers of mass over particular caps and not. You know, how, how this related to what caps were actually ordered, I don't know. Um, but but um, a good example that I've seen, we did a catalog for a company called JP Cycles, and they're a huge motorcycle supply company out of Ames, Iowa, uh, Animals, Iowa. And um, when you start looking at their Harley catalog, uh, you, can, you can see what products people are preferring and what pro products or what product displays that they're not preferring. And so that got them to change the, how they were presenting the photography or the pictures within the catalog based on data like this. <coughs> so it's, it's a lot of uh, feedback. And before I forget, the question came up about SEO. Um, the way that most digital catalogs work is, is that they're fully S SEO compliant, meaning that when they get pushed out there, um, uh, they'll get picked up by the major search engines. <coughs> Etc. And also in the back end of most companies like this, you can add your own keywords and tags, etc. 
Um, one of the things I'll also say about statistics is, I know it's a real high chart, I'll explain it. Um, I think I was my train of thought. Um, oh, one of the things about statistics, um, uh, products like ours also is completely in integratable, that's the word, with um, Google Analytics. Uh, we, so we have our own tracking on the back end. A lot of digital companies also provide their own tracking and statistics, etc. But we also give you the ability to uh, uh, add your, your Google Analytics ID, uh, and so you get a good combination of the two. Because one of the things that Google Analytics will not give you, uh, especially with the way these Flash applications are designed, it will not give you the ability to see what page they're looking on, what links they're clicking on, because it is a Flash-based application. But you can combine the two and get a better perspective. Uh, the first shot up there just kind of shows um, by page or page spread um, uh, uh, some, some summary data, how long that they're spending on each page, etc. Uh, and then the bottom graph, and these are just extraneous graphs that I threw in there, um, just kind of shows um, uh, the distribution of page views over, over a set time. And, and the thing that's kind of interesting um, is, is why, why, why is there a spike on, on the page in the middle? That's like page 20 something. Let's see. Um, and a lot of times uh, people will, will run specials and they'll link to a particular page where they'll send out links to a particular page. Yeah, I have a question regarding the uh, flash side of things. Um, is it possible for you guys to have in the future something that's not flash based? Because flash costs a lot of time and money to develop versus your own know, script or something much simpler. Right, um, the, 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 the flash development is done on the back end and the way that a lot of digital companies, ours included, works is um, such that you, you upload the PDF, and this is kind of getting into the production process. Um, we can create a digital catalog or magazine like this in literally like five minutes. As long as you have the PDF ready to go, you upload it to the back end of the system, and then you just process it and it creates this. So there, there's no flash development required, you know, unless you wanted to drop special objects in. But with that's what I mean, I just say if I want to do an animated feature headline or something like that, um, if I go to Flash route, it will cost me a lot more than going just a graphic and a physical script in terms of development. So you guys can support that in the future, or well, we can drop a are you, saying, are you are you asking me can we drop a Flash object on there? No, a script object instead of a Flash object based on uh, animated. Backends like websites do because they're not moving out of flash because of the search engine optimization part. So I'll just wonder. That, that's a question I have to bring up with our developers, but right now it's limited to dropping flash objects on, on top of the page. Any questions? Is there also any way to like um, specify like, the content that You could create, there a lot of digital companies um, create like a registration form. So as long as you, 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 you force them to register and log in prior, then yes you can. You don't want Big Brother watching all the time. But, um, I guess, yes? Just on that note, I mean, you can do variables. So you could maybe do an A-B testing, for example, in that case. You know, if you're selling, sending it, sending it to women, you might have a, a woman on the front of the cover of the catalog, and vice versa, and see which one holds the most. Yeah, and actually that brings up a, a good point also about distribution techniques. Um, uh, you can create a digital publication, and then depending on the method that you use for delivering that via various email campaigns, uh, you can just provide a link to, to uh, um, uh, the, that particular digital publication. So if you know that, that the uh, population segment that you're looking to send that to is, is primarily you know, women between 30 and 40 or something like that, then you can look at the stats associated with that as well. And, and likewise, you can look at the, uh, the internal stats and also the Google Analytics stats as well. Um, and then finally, um, 
just talking about a little bit about customer tech service. Uh, Monitor Expo, uh, by converting our print-based publications into digital editions, our first-time buyers increased 126%. Um, it, it was, it was kind of interesting because, um, and again, this is my, using my family company as, a, as an example, um, but they send out weekly e emails uh, to, to their clients uh, talking about their, their weekly specials, et cetera. Uh, well, what they did then, they, they, they said, all right, here's the stats that we got uh, from orders online. And then the following month, they said in their email, uh, here's our weekly specials, check out the weekly specials in our digital catalog, and here's the link to go do it. They saw um, initial results jump up quite a bit, and also first-time buyers also jumped up as well. Uh, Vestas, a uh, Danish company, uh, we use digital editions to cut down on printing costs globally and as a way to direct marketing at trade shows. Um, when we do trade shows or companies do trade shows, this is a wonderful aid also uh, to have at your booth, etc. Have big widescreen, you know, have, have the catalog flipping through. Um, GISC, uh, they're actually a Danish um, food chain. Uh, with digital editions, we are able to handle all publications internally and deploy globally. They're able to, from a central location, create the publications and deploy them anywhere that they want. Um, that was kind of like the last page. So, that's my contact information. Uh, if anybody has any questions, or is there any more questions? Um, a big round of applause for Jeff. Thank you so much. <laughs> Jeff handled quite a few questions through the presentation, and some good questions were raised. Do we have any additional questions before we move on? Roger? Uh, I think one of the concerns I think some people have is uh, how, how much broadband you need to actually make this work uh, effectively. Uh, I can see why Denmark might be one of the leaders because this last few months ago they passed the resolution saying that broadband is a human right. <laughs> you know, a small country, they can make promises like that. I've been to Denmark like three times last year and it's, um, they're a very happy company. Um, one thing, uh, another benefit of going digital in this format is, is that each page is a fraction of uh, what a regular PDF file is. Uh, so, so the, the, the uh, footprint of each page is far less than downloading a uh, typical PDF. A lot of people get so wrapped up um, that they want to have, you know, the, 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 the best quality, the best resolution PDF that, that they're trying to send out, you know, a, a 1200 DPI PDF to be uploaded. And it, it creates just a, a, a horrible download. Um, and, and so that's the other thing that you don't need to be high speed per se, but you want to make sure that your, your files are, are optimized as best <laughs> Um, so our magazine also looked into digital distribution for a long time now, and um, we look at some of the sites that is currently up, like MacCloud.com, where you can order the prints after you view it or stuff like that. Do you guys have that also ability to, you know, have people just click and order a print, and we get a print directly uh, to lower our own distribution cost, so we don't have to carry a large inventory or something like that. Do you guys have something like that? Um, we provide the software to do the digital editions. However. Um, uh, I know that there's companies out there that do that. Uh, we don't provide the mechanism to, uh, to do that. Any other questions? Okay, last call for questions. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, thanks again for your presentation. <laughs> it's now time to do the round table introductions. We pass the mic. Um, please stand up, say your name, company you're representing, or your goal. If you have an ask, here's a chance to ask out and reach out. And I'll start with Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Brackett. I'm a graphic web designer for Ideation on the campus. Hello, Jennifer Dar with Sopata Designs. Um, we're mm -hmm. the fastest growing direct sales company out there. We are hiring, so if you know anybody that wants to get paid part, uh, 
full pay, working part time, look me up. <laughs> Hey, I'm Sunny. This is Gina. We're from uh, Shea Magazine. We're a campus uh, student run magazine. We're looking to expand. So we're looking into marketing and just hang out with you guys a little bit. Hi, I'm Sherry Marcy. I'm your GLEQ Great Lakes Entrepreneurs Quest. That's www.gleq.org. Uh, I'm your ambassador. And we are announcing a new business plan competition. We just had our results last Thursday. And this new competition has prizes of 100000 as well as 25000 for a company that wants to register. Um, the deadline for registering is March 5th, so please go on the website, www.gleq.org, just to register. You don't need to get your business plan competition or anything in for another six or eight weeks, um, but please register. Hey, Sherry, how many did you have at ACE last week? We had 975 people show up at ACE. Wow. I'm Diane Sheldon I'm with ProQuest. I'm in the sales department. I'm Shannon Janisic. I'm a writer in the pro, uh, promotions department at uh, ProQuest. I also do a lot of freelance um, web writing. My name's uh, Scott Campbell with the Pursuit Group, which uh, primarily we do online fundraising communications for nonprofits. Hi, my name is Tim Wynn. I'm with a company called One IQ, which does energy monitoring. Efficiency, which has nothing to do with marketing. I was just curious about this. <laughs> Jan Smilham, I have my own company, Milham Images. We do marketing strategy for for, this, for profit and nonprofit uh, groups, and we do it through visual storytelling. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kirk Beadle with the Entrepreneur Source for business coaches. We've been in business 25 years. If you know anybody who wants their business to perform better than it is today, give me a call. Hi, Tom Crawford with Viz Network, and we help people communicate better using the visual arts. Hi, my name is Vivian Bird. I'm with Bird Communications, which is my own company. I am uh, primarily a writer and editor, and I do a lot of fun, uh, donor centered fundraising materials and internal um, and employee communications. <coughs> I'm Dr. Carol Dunnitz. I'm a professional writer and strategist. I also am selling our Bond these days, which is a botanically based skincare product line. And for the next week, I'm donating all, uh, donating all profits from sales, which would be 35% of the purchase price to the Haiti Relief uh, Fund. So if you have an interest in skincare or gifts and you want 35% of you know, the, the profit margin to go to Haiti uh, for help, please see me. I've also just written a musical called Bernhard on Broadway. Uh, it's going to be a big hit, and now you get 30 seconds worth of Hail to the Flag of Freedom. We pledge allegiance true. See it waving up in the sky. Proud display of colors on high. Hail to the Flag of Freedom. Liberty, justice, too. Each broad stripe and bright star stands for hope, strength, and power. Hail to the red, white, and blue. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> back to I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> have banned me from singing in the car. <laughs> I'm Stacy with Dollar Bill Printing. We're a digital print company, so just like Jeff said, printing is not going away. You still need me. <laughs> Hi, Wayne Nino with Affordable Computers here in town. We save people money on their computers, printers, and technical support requirements. Hi, I'm Mike Wynn with Sangler Training, and we help folks sell more and sell more easily. Hello, I'm Emily Taylor. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> so I work for the Whole Brain Group, and I'm kind of a marketing consultant. This guy was just in our social media workshop class, or still is. And so basically help people bring their business online, um, integrate social media. I worked with this man on the other side of the room to do iPhone app integration and whatnot. So um, talk to me if you need any of those things. Hi, my name is Andy Wilmus, and I am the Director of Marketing Communications for Baron Chia. We're Michigan's largest VC firm. 
Hi, Dean DeAngelis, Business Process Improvement Consultant. I'm uh, Rich Baum with Centric Living. Um, it's a, uh, uh, I have a network of community-based real estate websites. I have 13 different communities uh, in the Detroit area, including Ann Arbor, where we have a great place to find real estate. Everything I do is sort of web-based and internet marketing. Hi, I'm Bob Fran. I'm Bob Fran Photography. I'm a commercial and advertising photographer in Ann Arbor. And you can see my work at bobfranphoto.com. Hi, my name is Steph Wood, and I'm from Positive ID. We do marketing and communications for small and mid sized businesses. And I thought you were going to be the Liberty Tax Lady. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Terry Duvall, and it's Duvall Design Limited. And I design primarily for uh, clients and education, healthcare, and nonprofits. Oh, sorry. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Eric, and um, I've been coming to these uh, meetings for a few months. I'm, I'm currently between jobs right now. I'm, uh, I have an administrative experience uh, working for uh, Cylinder 11. Uh, United we have Southeast Michigan and University of Michigan. I'm trained in all the Microsoft products as well as uh, certified in SPSS and SASS uh, data management. So if you know of anyone that needs any kind of administrative help in their office, um, now just uh, please uh, keep me in mind. Thanks. I'm Sally Schmoll. I own Academy Coaching and I provide uh, professional organizational development services for higher education and industry. I'm Maida, also with Affordable Computers. I'm Julian Williams, I own Fountain Communications, it's a marketing and publishing firm. Hi, I'm Mary Lou Bowles. Um, I am currently between positions. I have a background in marketing, sales, and advertising with a robust computer skills and, and a background in everything from uh, broadcast journalism all the way up to internet marketing. Um, if you know of anyone who uh, needs those kinds of skills in their uh, organization, uh, please contact me. You can find me, Mary Lou Olds, on LinkedIn. I'm Ross Johnson with 3.7 Designs. We design websites, do search engine optimization, and consume lots and lots of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Nathan Olmstead with 3.7 Designs, also do interface designs and uh, social media marketing. Hi, my name is Jerry Humes. I'm a CPA, but my interest here was I published two newsletters on a volunteer publisher, and we both went to digital. Um, one of them is uh, I'm taking over the Ann Arbor Pioneer High School, or PTSO newsletter, so we're trying to find out new ideas to make it more attractive to the parents when they get it. I'm Tarun Gahani. I work with MSNL Digital right around the corner. We focus on digital marketing and social media strategy. My name is Cindy Tenorovich. I am currently in between jobs as well as some of the other people here. My background is marketing communication and program management. Well, my name is Cheryl Pfeiffer. I too am in between positions right now. I come from a combination of library or sales and support for automotive data statistics um, company. And I just wanted to keep up with what was going on in the technology. Hi, uh, I'm Rebecca Kuhn. I'm a freelance graphic designer. I'm kind of new to the area. This is my first meeting, so I just want to keep up with this kind of stuff for my clients. Hello, um, my name is John Demetrio. I own uh, several companies here in Ann Arbor, including ProTech Painters. We do residential, commercial, interior, and exterior painting. I am hiring. I am also involved in a bunch of other stuff because I'm a trained engineer and you just can't keep myself away from that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm Roger Rail. Um, I help people with their ideas and help them make those ideas work. I'm Al Carpinelli from Logic Solutions right here in Ann Arbor. We're a 15 year old digital web development firm doing custom applications, complete builds in both uh, social applications and mobile. If I can help, please give me a holler. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Andy Ross, and I specialize in the Adobe Flash platform, uh, which adds interactivity to uh, websites and 
presentations and other sorts of marketing materials. So if you'd like to add a little pizzazz to your, uh, to your work, I'd be happy to help you. I'm Tom Bank. I'm an independent financial advisor with Apache Capital Management. Hi, I'm Rob Davenport with the Ann Arbor Chamber of Commerce. I'm a for speakers in sales and marketing for our lunches. Hi, I'm Megan Crosby, also with the Ann Arbor Chamber of Commerce. I work with businesses who are looking for more exposure, looking for networking opportunities, and want to save money. I don't suppose that's any of you. <laughs> Dave Cozio, Arbor Moon Software, proud Ann Arbor Chamber member. Um, <laughs> our company, our tie-in today, we're a software consulting firm, and we have uh, an iPhone framework that can help you take a, a catalog and bring that onto the iPhone and present it to your clients in an affordable way. And our other tie-in today is that we also work on the connection experience for Plastic Logic. We just introduced a product called the Q Pro Reader, which was best of CES uh, for a number of publications. I'm Benji Van Broek, and I'm with uh, the Benji Van Broek Job Search Engine. <laughs> <laughs> Not optimized. <laughs> um, I, I turn data into information. I do quantitative analysis, market research, applied sociology, and I also help um, companies uh, increase their analytic capabilities by working with IT operations. Julie Roberts with Finley Creative for a marketing communications firm that does print, web, and advertisement. Hi, I'm Linda Beth. My company is City Walks. I specialize in making walking maps. Thank you for your wonderful costume of Uncle Sam and your wonderful song. Thank you again, Jeffrey, especially for those wonderful stories about the jousting and the other things. Thank you, Dee, for all you do. Thank you, Roger, for all you do. I'm also a chamber member. <laughs> Anything additional, Jeff, that you'd like to add during no. our intro? No. Ask? If there's any questions, just ask. I am Curtis Sherman from Prince Studios, and I do commercial and editorial and portrait photography. And I'm Dee Davey, Creative Ideas Marketing. I'm an independent marketing contractor. I help companies bring ideas for new services to life. And I'm also the voice of Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing. And it's my pleasure to introduce next week's speaker. Charles Hammerslow is going to be doing a first. We've had a number of firsts already this year in 2010. Next week, we are going to be featuring a book review. And the book that Charles is going to be giving a praise of is The Art of the Start by Guy Kawasaki. So come back to Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing next week. Before I sign off, we've got a few minutes, a couple of thank yous, and thank you, Brenda, for your thank yous. Um, Vince Chimileski, um, who helps out with our uh, podcasting and our sound, Roger Rail, who does our video streaming, Carter Sherline, Frog, Frog Print Studios, um, photographer for Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing, Stacy and Dollar Bill for sponsoring um, Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing for nearly two years now, and all of the other helpers who help make this event run every week. So a big thank you to all of you for joining us, and see you next week. Thank you.